Okay, Liz, I have a question for you. Do you think beauty can be an idol? Let's address this in this topic, Graven Images. Hey ladies, welcome back to the Models Movement Ministry, Christian Body Image. I am your founder and your host. I am a dual certified body image and self-esteem coach, and I minister about modesty and body image. Before we get started, I want to tell you to please subscribe. Um, I have had a lot of new people come over the past month, and I just want to say welcome to you. Go to christianbodyimage.com, modestmovement.com. We have free courses available to help you address comparison, the fear of opinions. We got some e-guides on our website. I'm also a coach. You can sign up for one-on-one -on -one time with me. Um, all of that is available to you. And please subscribe to my channel because we have so much more to talk about. This topic is something I believe God has been putting on my heart for the past few weeks. I've been asking him, what is my next video going to be? And I kept hearing graven images. We are going to talk about how idolatry is in the beauty industry. A lot of people think beauty and makeup and all of this, the way that we dress is not a big deal to God, but let me tell you it is. I have so many notes that are in my Google Drive folder that are just sitting there waiting for me to talk about. Engraving images is one God wanted me to address. So did you guys watch my most recent viral video that has 8K views about God's judgment for immodesty? God is not playing, okay? Not in this hour, he's not. He's been doing a lot of exposing. He's been sitting people down and he is shaking up our foundations and he wants us to get free from idolatry. Myself have been in idolatry and also a human beings, this is something that we do. Idolatry is anything we choose to worship and obey more than God. And that can be anything. That is the rawest definition of idolatry is replacing God with something. And this is something we see in our society all the time. This is something that we do. Um, as human beings, we are just prone to worship. And so I want you guys to, um, if you haven't seen that video um, of God's judgment of immodesty, this will really be a helpful topic. Also dress to impress. You can go back and watch that as well um, about if you're somebody who struggles to impress people and you always feel the need to uh, put on airs in a way to impress people psychologically or physically watch dress to impress so let's get into this topic about graven images this was such a profound teaching for me and like I said I had to pull it out of my drive and study it again so that I can tell it to you God has been dealing with idolatry this year last year he dealt with the fear of God the fear of God, everybody was talking about the fear of God, and it blessed my life to help me see how I did not fear the Lord. And so now we're going to talk about idolatry and how your beauty actually is an idol and can be one. Um, so let's get into it, you guys. So idolatry is anything you obey more than you obey God. And that can be people, sex, money, anything anything as human beings we are prone to worship something even if you're agnostic and you're atheist you are prone to worship yourself you are prone to worship things objects it doesn't matter whatever you are obeying more than the lord is what you are worshiping that thing is your god okay and so we're going to talk about how uh idolatry is found in the beauty industry and i believe that this is going to help so many women um to see how the reason and why they've been struggling so much in this area is probably because it's been an idol to them. And so we don't have like an actual physical statue when it comes to idolatry. Our culture doesn't really have statues that we bow down to, but there are still other cultures today that bow down to Buddha or they have their Hindu gods that they uh, made images of or they um, have their statues. Some people worship notable people that passed away as the statues. And so today our our statues are things that we think up in our mind. There are things that we feel. There are things that we, uh, people we bow down to. Like, you know, we could name out some of the things that we tend to worship um, and, you know, 
consider that to be a God for you if you're not obeying God uh, concerning that thing. And so the Israelites, God often dealt with them. I think the entire Testament always talked about idolatry because the Israelites were always worshiping the other gods of the surrounding nations. They turned their back on the Lord to worship Baal or to worship Asherah, to worship all these other things. They made up uh, idols of wood and clay to worship and they turned their back on the Lord. And so I want you guys to see how we also are doing doing the exact same thing when it comes to beauty and our image. So let me follow some of my notes here. So we're going to talk about what is that thing that women are bound down to today? How are we worshiping the image of, uh, how, do, how do we have a graven image in beauty? So first, let's get the definition. The Oxford definition of graven image is a carved idol or representation of a God used as an object of worship. And the scripture says, you shall not make for yourself any idol or any likeness, form, manifestation of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth as an object to worship. And that is Exodus 20 and 4. We also see another scripture that I really want you to pay attention to. Deuteronomy 4, 15 through 16, God says, So pay attention and watch yourselves carefully, for you did not see any form of God on the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb from the midst of the fire, so that you do not act corruptly and make for yourselves a carved or sculpted image to worship. And I underline this, listen, in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female. So he told them, pay attention, watch yourself carefully. You did not see a form of God when I spoke to you. Don't act corruptly and try to make an image or a sculpture or of any figure of male or even female. Those are, that's us, right? And so let's define what an idol is. In Hebrew, the word is pesel. It means image, carved, graven. Graven means charath. It is engraved, stamp, etching, a sculpted figure. It's imagined. Image is temuna. It's a likeness, a form, something portioned out as a shape. I underline that as a shape, phantom, embodiment, manifestation. Hmm. Okay. So what does this sound like to you from me drawing out these scriptures? Graven images also comes from imagination. It's anything that you constantly think about over and over that you're obeying more than God. You don't think about God as much as you think about this thing. It's anything that gets in the way of your loyalty to the Lord. Anything that you think in your in your mind, it's not just a physical thing. It's also something you're prone to think, always think about. But more specifically, graven is an actual image. It's an etching. It's something you can actually see, something that's carved out, something that's molded, embodied. Um, it can even be a silhouette of something, okay? that's Some of y'all be tripping by my logo. Uh, silhouette. So think about this. The shape of women's bodies being an idol, being a graven image, not just women, but men. Because God said in Deuteronomy 4, 15 through 16, he said, in the form of any figure, the likeness of male and female, our bodies are graven images. We worship bodies. You can't say that we don't. Do you see how we worship bodies, how people download images and they men put these images of women on their phones? There are people who wear shirts with certain images. There are this, this hourglass shape that women worship. Like we put images of, of certain body types on our walls and stuff. Like we worship bodies. We always call somebody a baddie or that they are queen because they look a certain way. This, I, I believe, and this is what God has revealed to me, the images of bodies and the shapes of bodies is an image, it's an idol for many of his people in the church, many of his women particularly in the church. And it reminds me of what Romans 1 and 23 says, in exchange, we exchange the glory of immortal God for the glory of men. We exchange, we say, you know what? Instead of being like Christ and keeping the image of Christ Jesus, these people, we, we're looking at what's right in front of us. These people are bad. Like, they, they got it going on. You know, we exchange the glory of God for the glory of men. We want to be worshipped by humans. We want to be glorified by how we look. And so we exchange that. Instead of glorifying God and giving him honor and reverence, we want to be that thing. And so we get these body types. 
that people worship today. This is an idol. This is a graven image. And so I want to do, um, if you guys watch Dress to Impress, I definitely recommend you guys go back and watch it. If you're somebody who struggles with impressing people with your looks or impressing them with uh, who you are as a person, like psychologically, definitely go back and watch Dress to Impress. If you did watch it, I want to give you guys a side note that I learned when I was studying. 2 Kings 16, 10 through 17 says, King Ahaz saw the pagan altar at Damascus and sent a model version to the priest Eureja to create the exact same thing. King Ahaz went to do business in Damascus and he saw a pagan altar that he liked and he sent word to the priest saying, hey, make this for us. What does this mean? This is what idolatry looks like in the church. We're going out in the world and we're, we're out evangelizing and we see the pagan altars. We see how they're dressing. We see what they're listening to. And we're like, hey, go back and make that for us. Let's let's put a Christian spin on this thing. Or the, the Christian women, you want to dress them modest now because you see how people glorify that out in the world. So you're like, hey, make this for me. Let me, let me put this on too, you know? And I learned also that King Ahaz was King Hezekiah's father. I was like, because in, in Dress to Impress video, you learned that King Hezekiah was in idolatry with the King of Babylon. He uh, was trying to impress him. And so I was like, wow, this thing is generational because King Ahaz, his dad, was trying to also become like the pagan nation by getting, um, having Eureja carve out or make a model version of their idol. And so it was a generational thing. And I don't know if that's for you or not, but a lot of us struggle with rejection and abandonment. And we think that having this certain body type or having this certain look is going to fill our longings. And maybe your mom and your dad struggled with rejection and abandonment. And so that's something that you're now prone to. And this is a generational curse that needs to be broken because now you're prone to doing the same thing your father and your mother did. I don't know who that's for, but that's that's who it's for. So it's the, the perfect beauty is the graven image that we worship today. And we have been doing this as a society for a very long time. If you remember the 80s and the 90s and 2000s, the skinny model movement, women were trying to become these size two models and they were killing themselves literally with dieting and with bulimia and with uh, anorexia trying to achieve this size two model look trying to look like Naomi Campbell trying to look like Tyra Banks um, and then you saw Monique come out with the fat girl movement and her video her, her movie fat girls because she was um she was like coming out of the uh she was like coming against that because she was like you know fat and so she was trying to help fat uh, larger women feel more accepted by always being mean and she was so mean to these skinny models she was calling them bees and ages i mean y'all y'all can go back and y'all know that if you grew up in that era you saw how monique was always uh coming for that movement and um and so many women like have died from bulimia and anorexia trying to maintain the size two model look and models themselves have come out to say uh you know they wanted me to look a certain way and i ended up getting sick i wasn't eating i was throwing up trying to maintain this graven image that people worship today and if you go back and look at my other video the history of the pinup movement in the centerfold, you will learn how even in the 50s and 60s, women were worshiping the idol of beauty. There were some male artists in the 60s who created this pinup girl. Uh, she was called the impossible woman because they imagined graven images. Didn't we say the definition was also an imagination? These artists imagined a graven image of an impossible woman. They drew her and they plastered her on the walls and women saw that and they were like this is what men want us to be let's become that and these women wore these tight corsets and these tight wires under their dresses that crushed their ribs to make their waist super skinny the pinup girl if you go look up a google image um she was uh she had very long legs and she had a very snatched waist and she had those hips that were wide and she was a sensual in nature um they always drew her sensual she always had like a fishnet stocking or her dress was up a little too high they were trying to become that back then. So body image uh, and engraving images is something society has been doing for a very long time. You guys can go back and watch that video as well. 
but this stirred up women back then too to try to become uh like this this image you know what i'm saying like this is crazy and in the image that we see today can you guess how do Nicki Minaj and them look today and Cardi B's and everybody going under surgery to get this small waist and this big butt? It's the exact same image today that we are worshiping. You see women serving their waist trainers. They're, they're in the gym. They're trying to achieve this big butt. They are trying to get these boobs. And it's the image that we worship today. And many women hate themselves because they don't look like that. Everyone's trying to achieve the same look. That is an idol when we're all bowing down to this hourglass shape, we're bowing down and we're hating other people and we're hating ourselves because we don't look like that. This is an idol. So how do you know that you have fallen into this idol? I'm going to show you some fruit that you might see in your life that tells you that you're serving a graven image. So if you're laboring to become like this image in fitness, surgery, and dieting, then this is an idol for you. If you're prejudiced towards those who don't look like it, it's an idol. If you're jealous of those who have it, it's an idol. Uh, if you have self-hatred because you can't achieve it, if you compare and you compete, if you're obsessive and, and uh, admiring all these IG baddies and all of your feed is just covered with perfect bodies um, and celebrities, harmful behavior to yourself and other people, uh, if you, you're basically worshiping this thing in your spirit because you're making decisions based off of this image. You're, you're, what you feel and what you think about this image is changing your own behavior. You're now worshiping the Bible of this idol of what you need to do to achieve it rather than serving God by becoming the image of Christ Jesus. That is how you know you have an idol of beauty because you're now becoming, you're now conforming to what the world says the beauty needs to be in, in society. You're now conforming to that rather than conforming to who God says you need to be. And that's like Jesus. You see how this is an idol for you? Um, and so, so how do you know they're idols? Because it's the fruit. The fruit that you're doing, it's wicked. It's not godly. It's replacing your devotion to the Lord. You're not becoming more like Jesus. Well, maybe, okay, maybe you say, well, it's nothing wrong with me going to the gym and working out. It's nothing wrong with that. But it becomes an unordinary thing when you are replacing that. When you're hating yourself, you're competing, you're comparing yourself. Look at the fruit. It's nothing wrong with you taking care of your temple. Please, by all means, take care of God's temple. But are, is your temple bowing down at the obedience to a graven image as you making your temple become a graven image in your mind because you're striving for that you think about it all the time you're not eating your your um borderline body dysmorphic mentally you're becoming mentally ill trying to achieve this look body dysmorphia is an obsessive compulsive disorder are you obsessing over this image is it becoming your life your bread and your butter now to become this image, then it's an idol for you. And God's not gonna serve. He's not gonna, he, you either choosing him or you, you going out there. You can't have both of these things. So you're gonna have to lay one of these things down. And I implore you, lay down this idol of beauty because it's all, it's, it's, the way you do one thing is how you're going to do another. That's what I tell my clients. The way you serve this idol here with beauty is how you're going to serve something else. You're already tainted. A little leave and leave is the entire lump, ladies. A little bit of idolatry and beauty is going to leave in your lump. It's going to it's gonna end up infiltrating your life and showing up in other ways. And now you're just prone to idolatry because you're not dealing with this uh, issue here. So if you're envious, you're competing, you're imitating other women, you're copying them, you're mad at them because they look a certain way because you can't achieve this look, it's an idol for you. It's producing wicked fruit. That means that you're serving the the, the word of an idol. You're, serve, you're doing um, the opposite of what God would want you to do because there's another voice in your life. And the Bible says that those who serve idols will be just like them. So rather than being concerned about becoming more Christ-like, we're concerned about taking on this image that people glorify. Rather than glorifying God, we want the glory of man. We're trying to look like a certain thing. 
All of the obsession over waist training is an attempt to form ourselves into the grammar image of what society calls perfect. Just like the enemy, your heart grew proud because of your beauty. Say you wanted to become like God. Now you want to become like all these women that look, you want to become like the IG baddie because you want the glory on yourself. Ezekiel 28, 17, your heart grew proud because of your beauty. We want to be flawless, perfect, and admired. Worship, the definition of worship means to adore, to idolize, to esteem worthy, reverence, to fear. Worship also involves the act of service. And how do we serve the image of beauty? Giving yourself over to it, constantly working out, constantly getting surgery, hating people, hating yourself. That's how you're serving it. You're doing something to serve that idol. You're laboring to achieve the look and the status. And Psalm 135 and 18 says, those who make idols are like them, absolutely worthless, spiritually blind, deaf, powerless. So is everyone who trusts in and relies on them. You're relying on your beauty to get you acceptance. You're relying on your body to get you the, the, the love and acceptance that you need. And it's not going to make good on its promise. It's, it's going to disappoint you because all of those who put their hope in the Lord will never be disappointed. But he says here that those who trust in idols will be disappointed. The idol of beauty is not going to give you that acceptance and love that you need or that attention that you're looking for. You have to deal with the issue of rejection and abandonment. If you don't, then you're going to have an idol. That trauma is an, is an idol to you, is a God to you. It's going to tell you to do this, that, and the third to fulfill that that hole that's in your heart. And only God can feel that. Let's look at some more definitions of worship. It also means bondage, bond service, to dress to serve and to work. I thought dress was so profound because how you dress is showing who you're worshiping. And if you find yourself dressing lustfully and immodest, that's because you're worshiping the idol of beauty, which is inflamed or, or used by Satan to get you out of God's will, to get you to stop serving um, the Lord. Women work hard for the images of beauty they worship. Yeah, we do. Many are in bondage to the idol of beauty and suffer mentally with the body dysmorphia, being obsessed with it to the, the point when you got to take anxiety medication to stop worrying about the flaws you think you have. This is an idol. It's not healing you, it's hurting you. Rather than being imitators of God as his children, people imitate worldly images of beauty. And do you want to know if this is an idol for you? Like I said, look at the, the list that I read off and how much are you spending to achieve this? How, are, how hard are you working to achieve this? Are you spending that same amount of time with the Lord as you do in the gym? These are things to look at in your life. And idolatry is anything you obey more than God. If the image of beauty causes you to hate, it's idolatry. If, if your emotions and mental health are impacted, it's idolatry. I have never seen... Women, this, this appearance have such a grip on women, like the way that it does. And I believe that's why God called me to talk about these things. Because we're working hard to imitate the world and to conform to them, and we're not becoming imitators of Jesus. And he is the perfect image of God, that what we should become. And that is the whole point of my ministry, is to help you become and conform and imitate the perfect image of Jesus Christ. Nobody has that perfect image out here in the world. Their images are not going to help you feel wanted, loved, accepted, and give you the intention that you need. It's time to get rid of our idols of beauty. So how can you fix this, ladies? If you know this is you, humbly repent. Repent for idolatry. Repent for rebellion. Repent for allowing this to change your identity and to make you feel like you're unworthy, you're not loved, and you're not accepted. Repent to God for idolatry and beauty and repent for unbelief and believing um, that he can't give you the acceptance that you need. And I want you to go and take my course, uh, Overcome Comparison. I just released it. It's brand new. It's going to address all of these things that I talked about. It's going to address idolatry, unbelief. It's going to show you why you compare, 
Um, it's going to show you why your prayers aren't being answered. It's going to go a, deeper into this. And it's brand, it's free. It's told all my courses are free at christianbodyimage.com. And you can also sign up for a free coaching session if you want more help in that area. So how do you get free from this? Repent and burn the images. Okay, Deuteronomy 7.25, I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you to burn the images. And he says, burn the images and don't covet their silver and gold. This is what he told Israel to do when they came out of a uh, another nation. So how do you do this? To burn an image, you might not have a physical image at home, but if you do burn it, for real. But literally, uh, in, in another sense, you can unfollow those baddie accounts, unfollow those celebrity accounts that cause you to compare yourself to them, uh, purge your immodest clothes, burn them too if you if you can. Um, pull back from hanging around worldly friends that cause you to conform to beauty in a certain way. Uh, stop watching certain shows if you know that it causes you to feel a certain way about yourself. And don't covet what they want or what they have. Because the, the very reason you struggle with idolatry is because you're wanting what somebody else has. It's because you have a lack inside of your soul that you don't believe God can feel. And he wants to cleanse you. Ask God to cleanse you and help him. Ask, ask him to cleanse you and to put his word in your heart so that you are inclined to obey and to serve him and him alone. Ask him to fill you up. Ask him to give you that living water uh, to heal you of any rejection, any abandonment, any uh, thing that has been uh, a lack in your soul. God wants to fill that longing. He said it in Ecclesiastes that that longing that we have is for is for God. He says in another scripture that our spirit um, is jealous for him like he's jealous for us. Your spirit doesn't want temporary things. It wants God to fulfill that desire. So I want you guys to go to ChristianBodyImage.com. Get on our email list, grab our free courses, grab our free guides, and um, subscribe to this channel. I have so many more studies. I got like over 10 different studies of these just stuff that's been blowing me away. And God is going to tell me when he wants me to talk about it. So make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, um, what else I want to say? I think that's all I want to say. Follow me at Modest Movement Ministry on Instagram and at Christian Body Image on Instagram because we kind of dry over there and I'll be posting and I don't get no love. So uh, make sure you subscribe on all of our other um, platforms and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.